That was crazy. When he was sentenced in the seventies, he was given like I think it was eleven life sentences. Eleven. Some three, two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to No Offense. We got the one and only Larry Hoover Jr. on today. Thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. Oh, man. I thanks for having it. me, man. How's the day going so far? Oh, man. It's pretty good. It's just yeah. a little hot, but I heard it's been hotter right? this weekend. It it's was hot. bad on Friday. Yeah, it's, it's hot really in the tent, too, in here, so sorry about that. It's like a little oven <laughs> yeah. in here. Hey, we tried to get a fan. It's blocking the sun, though, <laughs> I know, so well, it helps. Right? That's, the best, <laughs> that's the best we could do. We can, we can afford the fan. Yeah, exactly, right? Fan's out of budget. If you don't move much, you know, you'll be all right. ain't too bad. But what you been up to lately? Man, just um, man, just working on freeing my father. I just came back from um, Kentucky the other day at the RV park doing a redneck rave with my artists. No you know, so just That's moving awesome. around trying to make it yeah. happen. Yeah, can you how's give that us, been? That yeah. Can you give us a little bit of a background on that? Because I was looking through your Instagram, I see like, you, got, you got a lot of love for your father and like the story around that. You said a little background on yeah, my, yeah, on that. If you want to get into it. Okay, you mean like who my father is? Yeah, pretty who he much. is and like what's why. Yeah, I, yeah for someone who might not know. Watching. Yeah, just okay. getting awareness yeah. to everything going on. All right, so my father is, is Larry Hoover. And through what the media put out there, he's known for being a leader of the Gangster Disciples. But my father did start off as the leader of the Gangster Disciples. And through time, he used his leadership to start making changes trying to correct some of the wrongs that he did. Sure. But he doesn't get any credit for the changes that he made yeah. and that he was trying to galvanize the people to to vote. You know what I mean? He started doing Rock the Vote years ago before Puffy was rocking the vote. He started on um, having people come together and march to keep hospitals open, to keep Damn. schools open in the neighborhoods. Damn. Yeah, it was... They had 21st century vote. They shut down City Hall. But he... He doesn't get any credit for yeah. trying to change as a person. They hold him as the person that he was in the beginning. And now he's in a federal prison situation where the First Step Act changed the time that they gave him. It was the discrepancy between the um, cocaine law and the crack cocaine law. So the time that they gave people over for crack cocaine wound up changing. So they was they were over overcharging people. Oh, shit. So now with that law in effect... He qualifies to be released, but it's up to the judge's discretion. So there's other people on this case because it's the exact same charges. Oh, wow. They have been released, but the judge has to decide whether he feels like it's a good idea to release him instead of releasing him and giving him an opportunity to do right or do wrong. You know what I mean? That's and if he up. mess up. How's the progress on all that, on getting him getting him? Um, we working on, we coming to the deadline with answering the questions that the judge had put out there because he denied them without prejudice, which means he denied them, but he still gave him a chance to come back in the court and try to uh, prove that um to some of the judges thoughts like it's no it's no worries about what he yeah. thought might go wrong. So we just have to show that you know that it that it won't happen the way that he whatever his worries are like it's not gonna happen. Like my yeah. father's seventy one, he's not interested in anything criminal. Matter of fact, he's appalled at what he hears about this going on in the street. He wished that he wonder why, you know, people can't come together and do something about it. Yeah. But, you know, without the structures that was once set in place, it's a little different. Things can still be done, but not the way that it could have been done before, you know? Yeah, yeah. Is it's got to take a toll, man, doing that. Like, is that just like a lot of, like... It's gonna be so much work dealing with that and, and going yeah, out and of work dealing for you with like, too? like, are you just on this all the time trying to? I mean, it's help? it's a constant fight. It's been a part of my yeah. life, my whole life. You know, I've yeah. been waiting for my father to come home since I was a little. Ever since I knew he was actually in prison, you know, I've been wanting to come home as a kid. I wanted to be a lawyer to get him out of jail, and oh then, you know, going through the years of hearing that something might happen and then he's denied you know so it's been a fight you know my whole life it's just part of my life yeah. at this point and it's gonna stay a part of my life unless something changes or he dies you know i'm always be fighting for him to come home yeah. it must be extremely frustrating dealing with the justice system because i feel like they're not always helpful um yeah it is kind of frustrating because if you look into a lot of the things that happen it seemed like it would go a different way but 
you know, when they choose to, they kind of go the way that they want to go or deny yeah. what they want to deny, even if things show that it wasn't right or it, could go, or it should be a certain way, you know? And there's a lot of people there's like the, that are in the justice system that – probably should already be released there's a lot of like i think yeah. there's a lot of that going on yeah that's why it's a big push for prison reform you know yes. because some like the things that they do and the the way that they use their power is wrong like you got to be fair if you want people to respect the authorities like the authorities have to be fair like if you if you serve a, if you do a crime and you get time for that crime you should be able to do the time and and move on and you shouldn't be over sentenced and you shouldn't just pick people because you need to make somebody be guilty to make the people be okay you know what i mean you need you got to really find the people that did stuff and you just got to be fair for something that's so serious like you're literally taking away years of a person's life like the lack of sometimes effort on the justice system side is sometimes like crazy to see because it, you're taking away like you're literally taking away people's lives, lives yeah. years of their life. And like, sometimes it almost feels like laziness or just like, they don't want to do yeah, nothing about not concern. it. No concern. Cause it's Lack just like of numbers. Well, and taking away like their future too. When they do get out, uh, like what life are you going to have after you get out? Well, what time do do? is what you can't get back. You know yeah. what I mean? Once that time is gone, yeah. it's gone. So like, I got a friend of mine, he's incarcerated right now. And he told me a story about calling his father. Like I need some money. I'm trying to fight this case. You know, I'm trying to come home. And he said his father told him that um, you're supposed to fight not to go to jail and hung up the phone on him. Oh, my God. It rung, but it's the truth. Because once you're in their custody, you got to deal True. with what we're talking about right now. Them taking their time or maybe not being concerned or, you know, not caring. Whatever the situation is. Or really, sometimes they may really just want to believe that they're right. So through your experience so far, if they could make, like, one change, what would it be? That would make, like, the most impact. If the... As far as prison reform, if they can make one change. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm going to be biased right now because of my situation. Right. Follow the law. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like if my father qualifies to be released. Okay. So, so just then be, yeah. Fair. Yeah, be fair. Yeah, be fair. Follow the law. Be fair. Yeah. Because yeah. I feel like sometimes there's a lot of personal There's too much gray area too much gray, a lot, a lot of, of gray area and too much yeah. personal people just like putting what they think is the law in there not reading exactly how it is well judge's discretion takes it out of the law and puts it into the hand of the judge so whatever his feelings are determines what will happen with my father do you think that it's kind of an uphill battle because maybe they're trying to like use it as an example for for younger generations and things like that Oh yeah, he's definitely think? used as an example. He's yeah. the uh he's the Jesus Christ of criminals and crime. You know, he's oh. persecuted for for everybody else's things along with what even what he did. You know, so what they're mean? trying to not be fair, so they could be like, This is what happens. Yeah, you this know, is what happens. It's definitely and, like an and it's example. a great example, but that was the example that um kept me on the straight and narrow, and that was the example he was trying to use to get to the world but like i say they didn't want to accept that coming from him at least the powers that beat it there's a lot of people out here to change their lives because of him and believed in what he was talking about but the powers that be don't want to accept him as trying to do something right they can they only want to see him as from the criminal criminal aspect if uh if it's not too personal like how is that relationship with your father been you know basically growing up kind of having yeah, to deal with the situation like and, and how often do you guys talk like how has that been Oh, man, um, long as my father was in Illinois, I've been living my life going to jail. So I was lucky enough to have my mother and my grandmother that went to see my father and made sure that I went to see my father regularly. So we had a great relationship. Good. You know what I mean? Yeah. A lot of people went on um, just say a man is incarcerated and maybe the, the mother and the father don't get along. That relationship with the kids is torn because their father's gone for so many years and you grow into an adult and a father comes and he wants to be a father or maybe even try to tell you what to do or something it's like i'm grown now who, yeah. who are you you haven't been here you wasn't here to support me going through this that and yeah. other but i was lucky to have um a strong mother and a grandmother that made sure i seen my father constantly only when he was on um, Moved to Colorado was it harder to see him because it's okay. like a whole vacation a hard, just to go out there. Yeah. 
You can't yeah. go every week or anything. I mean, nah. That's a hard one to do for sure. Nah, that puts months in between. Damn. And COVID even put a year and a half in between. Were you not able to visit at all? For about a year and a half. Wow. wow. Yeah. That's wild. It's got to be hard, dude. Yeah, it was rough. Hey, right yeah. now. What it's was... rough on me, but really rough on my mother. Yeah. 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 When you first uh, when he when he first was sentenced, what was the sentence that was given to him? Um. So that was crazy. He, when he was sentenced in the seventies, he was given like I think it was eleven life sentences. Jeez. Eleven. But the thing was, back then they would give you that time, but you wouldn't really do that time. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. You it, get like for like you know good behavior and stuff, and it's cut in half and cut in half. Yeah. And, then you go yeah. to the parole board. See, he was a C number, and they gave him um. The C number just kept going to the parole board to get their time turned over. And these nets are at us. I know, but, uh, dude. Seriously, like what's going on? But so, yeah, the C numbers would keep going to the parole board. Like, he actually goes to the parole board now. But it was never expected that he was going to have to actually do that time. They were thinking like 11 years oh, that really? he might have done or 20 at the most. But it didn't work that way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Besides for that and what's going on with that, can you explain to whoever's watching like what you do and like what what do you do now? And, and what you do outside of that as well, you know. Okay, well, all right, well, what I do, the main important thing that I do, I'm a father and a husband. You know what I mean? That so I, I thank you. I take care of my my kids and my wife. You know, I just take care of my family. You know, I've been in um construction, I've been a union construction worker for the past 22 years, you know, and then I've been working working towards prison reform. I have a um, a non for profit called Paradigm Shift Academy, and I want to try to change the mindset of the youth out here. Some of the stuff that my father was doing, I want to take the reins on that and change the mindset of the youth so they don't end up in those um end end up in those prisons, you know? Yeah, yeah. Along with working on prison reform and just trying to do whatever I can to help yeah. make a change out here in this world. If there's other people doing stuff I and I can jump in and help, that's what I do. And yeah. we all need to do that. 100%. It, I don't think it would ever be enough for organizations doing things, trying to help the youth and trying to make changes out here in the world. Help anybody that's less fortunate to need help in any situation. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Do you do anything on the part of like Chicago violence, do you have anything that you're working towards with that or nothing right now? You know what? Actually, um, I got back in late and I needed to be here, but our organization was taking part in a gun back back today over in, um, not far from here, over in the Austin area. Yeah. You know, and speaking to the youth is just trying to tell them trying to give them a different outlook on how they see things. Like right now, the understanding if somebody angers you, you know what I mean? You kill them. That's not an outlook. That's on not the how world. it should be. That's not how it works. <laughs> you know that I mean? is not. Everything comes to I kill somebody. Like who wants to live in that world? So I'm trying to use my little bit of influence to try to give people a different outlook on how we living out here. Yeah, I want to awesome. live in a different world. I want to go have fun, like come to an event like this and yeah. enjoy myself and not worry about you know, ending in violence. Good question. What are like the programs that they're trying to work on on, like, on the South Side and stuff that you think are like worth working on? There's a lot of like after school stuff and trying to give kids like more stuff to do after school, you know, if they're in a parent's home and like, all that kind of stuff. What, what are the programs you think are worth going down to help the youth um, I to stay out of that. Now, um, I'm trying to think of the specific names of the programs, but the names aren't the names aren't too important. So, just like so, what, what so would like help, it's, it's basketball you know? programs. It's um, it's people that it's a couple of schools that people have brought, and you know they put computers in there. They help people with homework. You know. When I say everything, I mean literally everything yeah, that gets people together to look at people as people. each other as people <laughs> and knows nothing other than that, not as GDs or BDs or Vice Lords of Stone, but Latin Kings for everybody to just look at each other as people. Any programs that that just pull people together and man, make them take a part of the world, not be an outcast in the world. All of it is um I think everything is is needed. 
Yeah. You Definitely know? anything that has to do with like I feel on the like, job program. Yeah, exactly. So having something it's more like some kind of program where they can have an outlook of something else to do besides joining a gang at a young age. Like anything that can be done that any type of program that shows like you know the basketball programs that give these kids like aspirations, okay, I could do this or I could do this. You know, just anything to keep them out of yeah. like Yeah, so gang like life. if it's a basketball program, if it's a program that um teaches people how to do music Show them how to work a camera. Let them know that they don't always have to be in front of the camera. Programs that let kids know that it's okay to have a job. Like if you in the if you in the trades, you can make a decent living. Like kids don't know that a, you can make a decent living on certain jobs. Oh, for sure. There's a Kid, lot of them you can. Like well, union construction to make a really good living. Yeah. So they they them. under the understanding that a job is you know sucker shit. Yeah. yeah. I, any I, any way anyhow, and it's. It's not that you can take care of yourself and take care of your family with a decent job. A, tr- a, a bus driver is not a horrible job. Yeah. You know, you don't know about insurance unless somebody tell you about it. Like, yeah. to have a job that pays insurance and benefits, like, you're not working just for that paycheck. You're working yeah. for the benefits to come in the end. You're working for the insurance that keeps your teeth in order and, you know, give you your prostate check. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But you know what yeah. I mean? All yeah, that. Yeah, like, yeah. kids don't, they don't understand. What they do need to understand also is that, like the stuff that they want, as far as um, the name brand, the Pradas and the Gucci's and all the big, the name brand people at this point, like you can have it, but you're not gonna get it from a regular job. It's gonna take uh, extra hustle to have that type yeah. of stuff, and it ain't worth yeah. killing yourself or, or giving your time away to a prison system to get it. Yeah, yeah. It's not worth it just to look cool. Literally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, cool. Well, where can everyone find you at? Man, I'm, are you big on the socials, and, and you, are you pushing that pretty hard too? So I'm um, Larry Hoover Junior underscore on Instagram, and then we had a Larry Hoover project that deals with um prison reform, and I'm I'm working at getting better with that. I'm kind of like the old man in this, you know. What I mean? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. awesome, man. I well, appreciate you coming. Yeah. Thank you for yeah, coming really on. I appreciate, I appreciate it. it. I appreciate you guys yeah. having me, man. Really cool yeah, hearing yeah. your story, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, that's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Let's uh, everybody. Peace. Real quick with you as well? Yeah. Great.